Hi, I'm Brian Trenchard-Smith for Trailers from Hell. This is Cinerama, cost $512,000 to produce and made over $4 million in its first year. A succession of highly profitable travelogues followed. But partner Mike Todd, seen here with his wife of the time, the late Elizabeth Taylor, saw the limitations of the three-camera, three-projector process. He left the company to pursue what he described with characteristic elegance as Cinerama out of one hole. He developed Todd AO, a 70mm format which could book many more venues than Cinerama without costly theatre conversions. But others wanted in on the long-run, top-ticket Cinerama cash cow, particularly exhibitor national theatres who backed a process called Cine Miracle. Three interlocked Mitchell cameras converted to six-perf pull-down produced a total picture virtually identical to Cinerama, with the exception that the right and left cameras photographed their portions of the picture by shooting into specially constructed mirrors, reflecting what would be in a person's peripheral vision. This meant that the three projectors could be in the same booth, reversing the process by projecting into mirrors that aligned the side panels with the centre. Unlike the Cinerama screen of a thousand hanging reflective louvers, the Cine Miracle screen was made of conventional seamless material that was substantially less curved. Thus, Cine Miracle neatly evaded the Cinerama patents. However, Windjammer was the only film to use the Cine Miracle process. Here is producer Louis de Rochemont on the left, standing at the stern of the Windjammer itself. The director was his son, Louis de Rochemont III. What happened to Louis II, I wonder? Producer Louis de Rochemont, whose credits range from the animated version of Orwell's Animal Farm to Vivian Lee's final film, The Roman Spring of Mrs. Stone, had strong documentary roots. He won an Academy Award for the March of Time newsreel series. His fictional films in the late 40s were shot on location, not in the studio. He was experienced with the three-panel format, having made Cinerama Holiday in 1955. He decided to record the epic voyage of the Norwegian windjammer training ship Christian Radish from Oslo to America and back. For 238 days, Cine Miracle cameras were on board as the 16 officers and 42 teenage cadets made the 17,000 mile journey. They visit many ports, including Trinidad and New York, where they have activities selected for their widescreen potential, like this runaway basket ride tourists take in Madeira, Portugal. Time has added a wry, campy quality to the awkward blend of earnest 50s docudrama interrupted by nine musical sequences. But the photography is spectacular both above and below the ocean. Cine Miracle devised a new method for smoothing out the dividing lines between the panels. Instead of the whirring gigolos used in the Cinerama projection equipment, Cine Miracle beveled the leading edge of the left and right projector mirrors, producing a blurred vignette at the join. This was an improvement, but still visible against sky backgrounds. Windjammer made a profit in Scandinavian countries alone, but its US box office was a bit soft. The public was tiring of the travelogue formula. Cinerama bought Cine Miracle and promptly shelved it. They went on to try their hand at three-panel scripted drama with How the West Was Won and The Wonderful World of the Brothers Grimm. But by then, the single-camera 70mm format pioneered by Mike Todd was servicing the epic roadshow market quite adequately and was much more user-friendly in production. Cinerama embraced it from then on. But a 120-degree curved screen does not deliver the same immersive experience as the original 146-degree reflective screen. If you find the evolution of widescreen formats interesting, go to the website of the American Widescreen Museum. It's a fascinating, meticulously detailed history of a quest for technical excellence that pioneered the standards taken for granted today. Thank you.